humankind. I was the Cassini mission to the system of uh, Saturn and the satellite and rings. The, the planet Saturn, the planet Saturn was, uh, well, was seen, is seen in the, with the night eyes, in the, one of the brightest planets in the, in the night. And, but uh, that was never seen by the telescope until the telescope was built by Galileo. The first time a Galileo looked with a, with a small telescope that he made by himself to Saturn, he was completely shocked and discovered something that communicated to his friends Kepler. And he wrote a cryptogram explaining what he had discovered and sent the cryptogram to Kepler in order to wait to be published the result before uh, nobody knew which were the result, what he had seen. So he sent it in a cryptogram. But Kepler was clever enough to try to decipher the, the, the cryptogram. And he saw like this. Salve ubistineum geminatum martia proles. With the same letter, he, he built this sentence that means uh, uh, salve, hello, uh, sons of Mars, Marcia Proles. Uh, that means that Mars ha may have satellite. Uh, they ha Gemina Geminatum, uh, so with two, two satellites. And that was uh, what Kepler thought that has been discovered by Galileo. But the discovery of the two satellites of Mars wait for around three years, 300 years later when they were discovered. There was not the message he tried to send. The message was this one. So, uh, so no. The message was this one. Altissimum planetam I, I'm oh, sorry, I have to use this. Sorry, it was off the, the. Altissimum planetam tergeminum observavi. Que quiere decir? That means the altissimum planet is, uh, is Saturn. I have observed. Saturn, and it looks like a three, a three, a three objects together. Trigeminum, tergeminum, it means three things together. And when he published the first, the first drawing of what he had seen, looking at, uh, at Saturn, he uh, printed like this. Uh, something big in the middle and two things uh, on the side. So he was completely sh uh, shocked because not any other uh, object in the, in the sky has this type of distribution of three things together. With a better telescope, he was able to, to draw this, that this is much closer with the reality. And later on with a better one uh, in, in 1623, he produced this uh, very nice picture of Saturn with the, the planet, the rings, and the uh, gap in between the, gib, the, the ring and the, and the planet. It was Huygens who make, a, but, but that was uh, some 30 years later, with a better, with a better telescope, with the, the, the industry of the, the optic increases a little, a lot in the 17th century. And he, he explained why Saturn is seen like uh, 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 Galileo saw it and how we can see. It's, uh, we, here is the sun, here is the Earth, and this is Saturn in the orbit. When, the, when we are seeing Saturn with the ring in, our, in, the, in the line of sight, we, we see only uh, the planet. When we, the, it's in the maximum inclination, we see the ring very well like here, for example, in this part. 
And this is a very nice uh, position that had been used to discover satellite because the satellites are hidden in the, in, the, uh, in the rings and when the rings are not seen, the satellites are seen be yeah, much better. But this is what uh, Huygens gave a very nice explanation. Huygens, by the way, was the one who discovered uh, Titan, the satellite Titan in, in orbit of Saturn. But this is what, what uh, Galileo drew, and this is one of the most beautiful pictures of Saturn taken by Cassini. There was uh, uh, a space mission who took this, this very nice picture and compared very well what, the, what he saw. So those are some of the characteristics of, uh, of this planet. It's uh, the second planet, the biggest planet in the solar system. It has a radius, it's like uh, around 10 times, 10 times the Earth radius, but it's, uh, the volume is 700 times the volume of the Earth, but the, but the mass is uh, only 95 times. So that means that the density of the planet is very low, it's less than one. So if we have an enormous ocean and we put Titan, uh, sorry, uh, Saturn on it, it will float. The density is less than one. But the, the ring extends something like 300,000 kilometers, so the, the distance between the Earth and the, and the Moon. So if we put the system in that, they will touch the Moon and the Earth to have an idea. They have an enormous number of satellites. This is the, the, the planet in the solar system with more satellites. It's 82, 20 of them have been discovered very recently from a Hawaii telescope. The orbital period, the time they take around the Sun, is to, uh, almost 30 years. And the, the, the rotational uh, uh, period is very fast. It's around 10 hours, so it's much faster than hours. So even if it is a big, it's rotating very fast. And this is a song of the, of the satellite of Saturn and the rings. Here is Saturn, and this is the satellite uh, in the, as, as here is the, the, the Saturn and the satellite. And, and one of the most interesting sat, uh, is uh, Titan is the biggest sat, uh, and we will talk a little bit, well, not a little bit, a little bit more of Titan, and there is also a, a very interesting satellite, the Enceladus, that we have talked already, and those are the ring, and there are where, here at the point where Voyager 1, sorry, Voyager 2, and the two Pioneers, uh, and the Pioneer 11, uh, took, uh, passed by the, the uh, Saturn in the, in the flyby, and the, where the Cassini orbiting section was, uh, don't. It, they selected this region that is clean of, of the ring. There is a separation between the A ring and the E ring the, where the, the density of object is less, so the, we took the possibility of, of making the insertion in orbit in this area that is less dangerous to destroy the, the, the spacecraft. This is Titan, the, the, I have shown already this uh, picture, but it's really very worthy to show it again. This is Titan as seen by Coma Sola in Spain in 1907. He noticed that Titan could have uh, an atmosphere because he deducted this because the, the center of the, of the object is much brighter than the border, and this is a, uh, characteristic of the object that are covered with an atmosphere because the absorption of the light in the border is much bigger than in the center. The moon that they has no atmosphere, is the bright of the moon is, is uniform around the, around the moon. There is differences of albedo, but this is because of the composition of the soil. But the, the brightness is homogeneous in the, from the border to the center. And this is... Uh, a, a real, uh, well, a real. This is a, a, a map of, of Titan taken by an Earth-based telescope, but it was uh, some uh, 84 years after, with the adaptive optics, a very high, a very big telescope, and in the infrared, and they, they, you know, the similarities are very close. So he was a very good observer. 
when uh, Voyager visited uh, uh, Titan, was it was a big surprise because they, they, they were expecting to see the surface of the planet, but it was not the, 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 the truth. What they saw was a, a reddish atmosphere surrounding the planet, completely opaque to the visible radiation, so he couldn't see any detail on the surface. And that was uh, one of the drivers of the mission to go to see in situ the, the satellite, because there is no possibility of seeing it uh, from the outside, so we had to cross the clouds and to see to, to look for uh, to look at the surface. Those are some characteristics of of Hoy of, uh, of Titan. Was discovered as we said by Huygens. Uh, the mass is uh, well that one. The equatorial radio is uh, point for the, of the Earth. The rotation period is 16 days, and it rotated uh, synchronously with, uh, with, with uh, like the moon with us, that is facing the same face every time to the Earth. He also, uh, Titan is facing the same face to the, to the, to the planet, to Saturn. And the, the, these two numbers here, very interesting, is that the surface temperature that the model predicted was of the order of 178 Celsius, and the pressure 1.5 bar. A bar, one bar is the the, the pressure of the, uh, the surface of the um, of the Earth. So it's uh, an atmosphere that is much more uh, with the pressure 50 uh, percent higher than the Earth. And what we measured it because the instrument in which I work had a, a thermometer and a barometer, measured the temperature in the place where we landed was this one. And the difference is so small that, we, that was, very, it was a very good uh, calculation of the modeler. And the, the density, the, the, the pressure, the, the pressure was 1.47, so this is, 1.5 bar, so there was, they put the real number, the real number perfectly. Why t Titan is uh, so interesting from the from the, uh, planetology point of view? For all this, uh, for many reasons, but the, here I put the, the most important. We have already talked some of them. One is they have a very it's the only satellite in the solar system with a dense, with a dense uh, atmosphere. Not, all, not any other satellite in the, in the solar system has an atmo a dense atmosphere. They have very, very little uh, sodium in some of them, but they, they, a, a thick atmosphere, there is not any other object in the solar system with this. And it's mainly formed by nitrogen, molecular nitrogen, exactly like our, our atmosphere. Our atmosphere is mainly uh, composed by molecular nitrogen with 73 percent, and the uh, uh, oxygen is the secondary, the secondary co uh, compound of our atmosphere. So, uh, and, the, and the oxygen in the Earth atmosphere is a subproduct of the of the life. So, it's life who has produced the oxygen in, in our atmosphere. So. We think that probably in three billion years ago, the atmosphere of the Earth was very similar to the atmosphere of Titan right now. But the thing is that uh, our atmosphere has been cooked by the sun, and the atmosphere of Titan is frozen since the, the, the beginning of the formation of Titan. They have a very, very low surface temperature, as we have seen, 179. Uh, Celsius below zero, where, and then water vapor, if there is water, it will be, not water vapor, water should be in a solid state, and CO2 also will be condensed in a solid state. But there is a very interesting thing, is that methane and ethane could be in a liquid state. And as I said the, f the first day of the, no, the first, no, the second day, the, the, the searching life in the universe, in those talks, I, I made a, 
panegyric of the liquid state. The liquid state is, is, a, is a magic state of the, of the matter because it's allowed to, to, to produce in, in the liquid state the, the speed of the reaction, the chemical reaction is much faster, is many order of magnitude much faster than the speed of reaction between gases and solid. If we put two, two, two stones together, they will take a, a long, very long time to react physically and chemically on, with them. But if we put liquid in a, uh, in, we put something in a liquid, it will either dissolve or react with the water. Well, with the liquid, if either is water or is alcohol or is sulfur acid or chlorhydric or, or whatever. So the reaction, the chemical reaction in the liquid state is much faster than any other uh, state of the matter. And this is the, what is very important because if there is uh, liquid in the surface of, or, or on a, or in the surface of Titan, is we, are, we were expecting that to, we can find complex, uh, complex, uh, a complex chemistry because there have been the possibility to create this complex chemistry. So uh, the, the possibility of having liquid in, in the surface of, of Titan was uh, really one of the drivers of the mission. And as a matter of fact, liquid is so strange mat, uh, uh, status of the, of the matter that in the, of the whole solar system, in the surface, on the whole, whole object of the solar system, only in two of them there is liquid. One is the Earth and the other one is Titan. Titan and the Earth, in this also a, a very sim a big similarity. They can have a, a liquid in the surface. As a matter of fact, there is uh, metal, liquid methane that play the same role that in the air, the water. It is in solid, liquid, and gaseous. And we'll see this later. To study this marvelous system, there was designed the Huygens, the Cassini Huygens mission. Those are some of the characteristics of the mission. What, this, what is very important is that was produced by two, the two agencies, the European Space Agency and NASA. And there was a, a, an example of collaboration between, between the two agencies. The uh, NASA was responsible for the launching and for the main orbiter, for Cassini, and ESA was responsible for developing the, the probe to Titan. There was 70, sorry, 27 countries participate, among them Spain, our, our institute also. And, uh, And the, those are the, the main objective of the mission, was the study of the Saturnian system, and uh, with, a special, with a special interest in, in Titan, because one of the, of the, two, the two spacecraft was devoted directly to, to, to Titan, to see the composition, the structure, the behavior, and all of this that is written there. And also, the, the, as the, the, the mission will fly by, be, before reaching Titan, we fly by Venus and Jupiter. So there, there was a secondary science when the, in the flybys. The launching of the, of the Cassini mission was, took place in Cape Canaveral on the 15th of, of October of 1987. I had the opportunity to be there with my three children and my wife and we enjoy, uh, I cannot explain <laughs> how the, the, the moment of the launching was so, so incredible. Because, well, there is some characteristic of the, this was the second largest rocket launched by NASA at that time. It was a little bit smaller than Saturn V, but it was an enormous rocket with 62 meters of altitude with 840,000 uh, uh, kilogram of uh, propellant so almost one million uh, kilograms of propellant. And there was, uh, it was during night. And once it started, the, the, it became day. <laughs> I remember we were uh, uh, sitting, well, sitting, standing in the grass, and the, the grass during night is black. <laughs> but then it was a green, a marvelous green all around us. That was something incredible. Uh, but the, there is something interesting in this launching. I, 
well, before this, is that was not launched to the outside of the solar system, it was launched to the inside of the solar system because, uh, because we need to make flybys and to have gravitational assistance on the interior planet to get much more uh, energy to be able to reach the distance to, to Saturn. I will explain a little bit later this. Now I, I will... Uh, I will repeat the, the, the short NASA movie that I think is, they make a little bit of a spoiler of the rest of the, of the talk, but uh, as I have put this before at the very beginning, and I Alone enjoy very much this, 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 so I will let you enjoy this grandeur of Saturn, its voice. rings and moons. After 20 years in space, NASA's Cassini spacecraft is running out of fuel. And so, to protect the moons of Saturn that could have conditions suitable for life, a spectacular end has been planned for this long-lived traveler from Earth. Following a seven-year journey through the solar system, Cassini arrived at Saturn. The spacecraft carried a passenger, the European Huygens probe, the first human-made object to land on a world in the distant outer solar system. For over a decade, Cassini has shared the wonders of Saturn and its family of icy moons, taking us to astounding worlds where methane rivers run to a methane sea, where jets of ice and gas are blasting material into space from a liquid water ocean that might harbor the ingredients for life. And Saturn. A giant world ruled by raging storms and delicate harmonies of gravity. Now, Cassini has one last daring assignment. Cassini's grand finale is a brand new adventure. 22 dives through the space between Saturn and its rings. As it repeatedly braves this unexplored region, Cassini seeks new insights about the origins of the rings and the nature of the planet's interior, closer to Saturn than ever before. On the final orbit, Cassini will plunge into Saturn, fighting to keep its antenna pointed at Earth as it transmits its farewell. In the skies of Saturn, the journey ends as Cassini becomes part of the planet itself. Okay, this is a picture of the Cassini uh, spacecraft. The, here is the, the, the Huygens probe. Here is the big antenna, the main antenna. And this is the, all the instruments are located all around the, the... And this is the orbit that I told you that uh, Cassini uh, was following. It was launched from the Earth here, uh, sorry, we're uh, launching here. It was launched to the orbit of, of uh, Venus. It made a flyby in Venus and it co recovered, took six kilometers per second of increase of his speed. In the second flyby in Venus, 
a year later, well, sorry, month later, he took another seven uh, kilometer per second increase of the speed with these two flyby. The third flyby was in the, in the atmosphere of the Earth in August 1999 and took another six, uh, six kilometer per second because with the, even with this 800, uh, 840 uh, tons of fuel, with this we were not able to reach Saturn. Saturn is need something like more than 30 kilometers per second to, to arrive in Saturn. And this would provide something like 15. So we had to take uh, energy from this type of, of, of uh, somebody call it magic, uh, magic pool. So this is, they, they play, they, they may fly by you in an object that is moving very fast. When you close to it, you, the, the attraction of the gravity of the, of the planet gives you energy to, to, be, uh, to increase your speed. And then you get by free, slowing a little bit the planet, but this is something that will not affect at all. And it, this increases. So he got, in this first three uh, flyby, uh, 19 kilometers per second by free, with no fuel. So more than it was needed to go out of the Earth. And it flew, uh, the, the, in August, uh, this is a very, uh, a very ugly picture, but no, it's, it's, one, it's a wonderful picture. One astronomer, uh, Gordon Garrett, in, the, in Australia, put his telescope looking at the sky the, day, the night in which uh, Cassini was, made the flyby on the Earth. He took a picture every 10 minutes of the region where the Cassini was supposed to pass, and he took this picture the first, the second, third, third. Every two minutes, he took a picture. And here was the, the when it was in the lowest altitude, and they, they, they produced the increase of the speed and change the orbit, and, sorry. And the, the, these are the other pictures that we took of Cassini when it changed the orbit and increases speed in the air. Really, is, I think it's very worthy to, to, to show this picture because, well, I am in love with this picture. So, uh, later after the, the, the flyby of the Earth, it flew by Jupiter, and it took a little bit, uh, uh, also increased the speed by two kilometers per second. And it, uh, the encounter with, uh, with Saturn was in July 2004. The proof to Titan was released on December the 25th of 2004 and arrival in Titan on the 5th of January 2005. Uh, it was predicted that was designed, the mission was designed to, to stand around 50 orbit in around Saturn. And it was to, supposed to, to stop in 2008, but the real mission stay in orbit we made 294 orbit, so it's something like six times more than it was designed for, and it took it was seven year more, uh, sorry, nine year more in orbit than it was supposed to be, and it was because there was a very good design of the mission. The, uh, I remember that we, when 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 you propose an instrument, you had to fight with the with the engineer of the mission, because if you try to increase one gram of the mass that you have asked for, you have to fight a lot to get one more gram. But they play with tons of fuel, and we don't complain, <laughs> we don't fight. Fortunately, this is what they do, because if the fuel was uh, in this case, was uh, calculated for the nominal mission. After eight years, the mission has to stop. But if you have more fuel, you can affront some difficulties in the travel. And as a matter of fact, if the fuel was uh, not enough, 
uh, well, calculated for the, the nominal mission, probably the mission will fail. I will tell you why. Because the insertion that uh, was supposed to be done in the orbit uh, on Saturn, the insertion is, uh, is, uh, is a very consuming uh, fuel. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a maneuver that is very consuming fuel because you have to, uh, to decrease the speed of the, of the spacecraft using fuel to, to get in orbit on the planet. And it depends on the mass of the, what you are going to put, the, 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 the quantity of fuel that you need to put in orbit, to, to, to insert in, in the orbit the, the, the mission. And in here, in this mission, or I will show you later, they have to change the, way, uh, the, the insertion in orbit because it was, in the nominal, was without the probe. The probe should be lo uh, sent it to, to Titan in, the, in a flyby to Titan before taking the, 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 the insertion in orbit in, in, in Saturn. But I will explain to you why later. They got, had to change the design of the mission and we, they have to put the insertion in orbit with, with the, the, uh, eight, uh, the 382 kilogram of, of the of the Huygen probe on board. And they, were, they did very, very well because they have fuel enough to make this insertion. Sorry, uh, because there was a very interesting thing that happened. These are the results of uh, numbers of the, of the mission. Here is almost five billion miles travel Along, uh, around uh, in the total, the total mission. Almost 4,000 paper, scientific papers have been published with the result of, of Cassini, Huygen. He made 2004, 2094 uh, orbit. He flew, he discovered six new moons. The, they made 162 flyby on the satellite of, of Saturn. Also this important number, 27 nation participate. The only number that uh, now th they don't shock us is, is this one. Only 635 gigabyte of information received from there. But I can tell you that this number, when we heard the first time, we, we, it was designed something to receive something like 200 gigabyte, and for us, the, at that time, the name, the, the, this number, a gigabyte, was <laughs> an enormous quantity. I remember, I, I don't know if I, I had time. The first computer that we bought in our institute was, had 256 keys, uh, keys of, uh, of RAM memory. I was the project manager of the, of the, when we started to, the, the computer in our institute. And I remember that we bought one megabyte and in, to increase from 128, we bought a megabyte of memory for our computer. And a person came from Madrid in a car to install the one megabyte in our institute. And I remember we pay what equivalent now to $6,000 for this megabyte. That was an enormous. My, my salary by that time was something like uh, some two or three hundred dollars. So, so it was something that. For then in, 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 in '95 when we sent this, the work gigabyte was not so. That now in any any false has 128 or even one terabyte. Anyway, sorry about this. And this is what I tell you. Once the, the, this was one of the most uh, uh, difficult moments on the, on the story of, of uh, Cassini, uh, Cassini Hoyen mission. And really, we were completely frightening. Once the Cassini mission was in the way to, to, to Saturn, the, the engineer made test of the communication system between uh, the, the spacecraft. Cassini and Huygens, 
on, on the probe. And they discover that the frequency, the emission and reception frequency of the, of the system, the communication link between the, the orbiter and the, and the lander, were perfectly tuned at exactly at the same frequency. They did not take in the design the, the, the fact that they will be moving very fast one or the other, and the Doppler effect will make them out of tune. And that was real. They put, they change the, the frequency. This was the relative, this was the mission, it's not seen there, but they put all mission design, all mission scenario is that one here, is written there. This is the all, the all scenery, or scenario of the mission. And the relative speed was 5.6 kilometers per second. Enough to, that the communication was complete, the link was completely deaf. There is no possibility to communicate with the, with the, the probe, with the, the lamp, with the uh, orbiter, and the orbiter with the probe. So we, we were, at this moment, we were completely lost. There is no possibility of having any information from Titan because we will lost the, the link. But there was a brain, uh, I remember, they, 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 uh, ESA and NASA made a joint team to, to try to give solution to this problem, because it was a real problem. The, the, the spacecraft was in the way to, to Saturn, and there was not a possibility of changing the frequency, because there was, there was two quarts coerced uh, uh, crystals could produce, uh, and they were perfectly tuned, and there were no possibility to change it by, by software. Since then, all the mission has a very, if somebody thought on this, it would be very easy to put, to change a little bit the frequency with the software, it's, it's very easy, but there was not possibility in that. So there was a brainstorming, uh, they meet, the engineer and scientists meet together many times, and then ask the people of the fuel if they can change the, the insertion in orbit, it can be done with, uh, with uh, Huygens on board of the, of, the, of the spacecraft. And they say, yes, we have fuel enough. So we can make the insertion with, uh, with Huygens on board. So then, in a, in the, I will explain a little bit this, uh, the first scenario. Just uh, very, uh, when, when, the, we, when the mission were approaching the system, they put uh, Huygens, they released Huygens in, a, in an impact orbit with Titan. And Cassini followed the, from behind, was following the, the, the probe the, in, in that way that when Cassini, when uh, Huygens, uh, entered the atmosphere of Titan uh, here, Cassini was at that, at that position with the relative speed of, the, of this. And when it uh, touched down the, in the surface of, uh, you know that from here, there is a cover, they were covering the, the, the radiation, well, the, the emission, but with the, not untuned, not tuned. Then when the, the when it touched down, the, the Cassini uh, spacecraft was in here, and in five minutes, it will be out of the field of view of the, of the, uh, of the lander. They came for a, in an, a completely different scenario. It's this one. They released the, in the fifth orbit, uh, when they released the, the, the the probe in, in, the impa, in, in the impact trajectory with Titan. But, and Cassini moved to a different orbit, separation of a very big separation of 71,000 kilometers, and the relative speed was less than half of this. And with this speed, with the, the, the Doppler effect was enough, was not big enough 
to untune the two, the two systems. And they were very well tuned. With a little bit, they, they lost a little bit of, of gain in the, in the communication, but was not enough, not, not enough to lose anything. And also, as they flew for a, 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 very, a very long distance, the time covering the, all the, the from the, inter, uh, the, end, the, the entry of the probe in the atmosphere to the, to after landing, it can be seen the, 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 the probe in the surface during three hours. So we increase the, the possibility, we increase the mission by, by, by very much and not losing the, the, not losing the communication. That was the most important. But also, I remember that the, the design of the, of the batteries of the, on the probe that was designed for five minutes because that was the time of the flyby of, the, of Cassini on, after the landing. After five minutes, uh, Cassini was out of the field of view of the, of the lander, so there was no need to have batteries. But it was so well calculated that the, the, the battery lasts more than three hours after landing. Those are the instruments that they were on board, on board, uh, on board uh, Huygens. Uh, one, this in blue is because we participate in this. This was devoted to study the structure of the, of the atmosphere, to measure the pressure, to measure the density, to measure the temperature, to measure the, the, the electrical characteristics of the, of the of the atmosphere to see if there is lightning, if there is a storm. So this is what we uh, produce in our institute uh, together with other institutes in Europe. And well, this is, the, this is a picture of the, of the probe itself and where the instruments were located. This is one of the sensors of our institute. That this is the, the there is another one in, in this side. This is uh, to measure the, the, the electric field and the, 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 to look if there is a thunderstorm and also this is a, a, a better view of the, of the, of the electrical sensor. This was also equipped with a microphone to, to see if there was a spark. We, we were waiting to, to listen of, from the, the thunder. Is, is the, yes, first the flash and later on the thunder. But unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't listen any, any thunder. There was no spark. The, 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 the activity of the, of the atmosphere was much more stable than we thought. We thought that probably we can see a storm, but we, in the, well, in the three hours we took the, the landing. You know? So, um, but the, that was very interesting because the, the acoustic sensor was able to record the, the sound of the parachute uh, going down, and that was very interesting. But we were a little bit disappointed because we didn't see any, any storm during the descent. And uh, one of the, the, of the objective of Huygens, of, of, the, of HASI, of the, our instrument, was to see the composition, the electric uh, composition of the atmosphere, if there was a, an ionosphere on Titan. And uh, I, rem I, I was the, the supervisor, one PhD of one colleague of mine who made the thesis with me. And he uh, made a model that seen that the, the cosmic ray may produce an, an ionosphere in, in Titan, in the atmosphere of Titan. And the, our instrument was designed to see if this was true or not. And this is what the, they were the measurement of, that we got with, uh, with the instrument. This is the concentration of electrons from 130 something to 
20 to 40 kilometers. And then we discovered there was a, a, an ionosphere produced by the cosmic ray in the atmosphere of, and so I take the possibility of showing this to you. Also, the, in the design, when they were at uh, 114 kilometer altitude, the mass spectrographer of the, of the, of, of uh, Huygens was taking a, a, a spectra, a mass spectra of the, com well, a composition of the, um, the very high atmosphere, and uh, he saw that there was the main component, of course, was in 28. This is a logarithmic, sorry. This is a logarithmic scale. Most of it is molecular nitrogen here, but also he saw some uh, uh, high mass uh, complex organic on it. And the, this is hydrogen, and the oxygen should be in 32. This is, uh, no, this is 28, 32 is here. So there were no, there were no, no oxygen, that's true. And there is other compound. And one it landed the, the same, the same uh, uh, mass spectrometer made this very, very, very complex uh, mass spectrum of the, the composition of the lower atmosphere of Titan. As I told you, because of this liquid, present in liquid, there is a lot of different products, even this is the limit of the more than 140 uh, mass unit. So there was uh, the, the confirmation that this type of atmosphere will produce a very complex, very complex uh, uh, element, uh, compound, not element. And this is, I will try to explain you a little bit this picture because I am, if I were in love with this picture of the, of the dots, with this, I felt really in love. Uh, it's, seen nothing at the moment, but I will tell you. This is what the mass spectrograph was measuring during the descent and after the landing, okay? Here is the concentration of nitrogen. So when it was something like 32 kilometer altitude, here, and this is the, when uh, the touchdown. The, of course, because of the increase of the, of the of the pressure when if you're going down, the, the quantity of nitrogen increases and also the quantity of methane increases with a very a little bit different slope, but this is a, not very important in this moment. But what, what is very extremely nice is that after touchdown, after landing, the concentration of methane increases slowly increase and at the end saturate the, the instrument. And this was the proof that we landed, we, we know that we, because of the seismometer that we landed in a, a solid surface, not, it was not a lake, it was a solid surface, but was a mud of mm, mm, liquid methane with dust. And because of the high temperature of the sun, the, the methane on the surface started to evaporate and, to, and was, measured, was measured by the, by the, uh, the mass spectrograph. So here is the proof that we landed in, a, a, I don't know the charco, how it's said in English. We, not lake, because it was mud. It was a mixture between uh, ground and liquid. Well, this, it, 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 we landed in, in, in mud, yes, in, in mud, but no mud with water, but with methane. So this was really, really, it's so, so ugly figure, but give so beautiful information that I, I wanted to, to show you. And now, uh, well, uh, we are getting a little bit late. And, uh, my favorite uh, direct movie director is uh, Stanley Kubrick, for many reasons. But uh, my 
my second daddy uh, preferred movie is the one I'm going to show you now. It's made with the camera on board Titan when it's going to land in the surface of Titan. For me, it's one of the more amazing pictures. But there is some technical difficulties that I have to arrange. Select, I select English, I hope. January 14th, 2005 begins with the Earth passing directly in between the Sun and Saturn, an opposition so perfect that it occurs maybe twice per millennium. Meanwhile, the Huygens probe quietly entering the Saturnian system is about to end its seven-year journey. As Huygens approaches, the inner planets cluster around the distant Sun. Saturn appears almost as large as Orion. A few moons are visible as white dots aligned with Saturn's rings, while Titan, its largest moon, is already well resolved. Huygens is destined for Titan, a mysterious world larger than the planet Mercury and shrouded by a thick brownish-orange atmosphere. The details of its surface have never been seen. Huygens' speed increases to near six kilometers per second, and Titan's disk quickly obscures our view of Saturn and its more intimate moons. As the probe enters Titan's atmosphere, the heat shield reduces the speed some 15-fold within a few minutes. The main parachute reduces the speed further. Those are Fifteen real minutes ages. later, the smaller Those stabilizer chute allows a faster descent at first, but slows as Huygens enters the lower, denser parts of Titan's atmosphere. Huygens is approaching a dark valley between brighter, hilly regions. Beyond the hills to the left, two dark parallel lines appear, which are later discovered to be part of a vast system of dunes which surrounds the moon. At 21 kilometers altitude, the probe moves through a thin haze layer as seen on the horizon. The bright area near the center top is the glow of Titan's haze illuminated by the sun. A complicated system of drainage channels, some hundreds of meters wide and kilometers long, are seen cut into the hillside. These are probably the result of runoff from methane rain. Stereographic imagery reveals hills to the left to be perhaps a few hundred meters tall, while features in the valley are tens of meters in height. For most of the descent, the probe travels eastward above Titan's surface. However, below seven kilometers altitude, the motion reverses into a backward westward motion. It reverses again at one kilometer altitude, and we move slowly southeastward. Hang on as Huygens lands on Titan's surface near a water ice outcropping ridge. Another westward looking view of the descent from 31 kilometers shows the area of Titan over which the probe has just flown. This affords us a good view of the drainage channels and apparent shoreline. More dark lowlands appear and a rough pitted hillside to the left. Spectra of the surface suggest that the bright areas are water ice in the darker areas are a type of hydrocarbon mixture that has never been produced in the laboratory. The small white dot in the lower center part of scene tracks our progress over Titan's surface. We see the reversal in direction at seven kilometers altitude, and we fly over the ridge near where we will land. As we approach the surface, our perspective brings the topography to life. We see that although there are rivers and a shoreline, the basin is dry. Below, there are distinct signs of erosion which crafted the rugged ridge line. Huygens sinks into one of these gullies. We experience a relatively soft landing on Titan's surface. The view from the surface reveals an amazingly Earth-like picture of a dry riverbed with distant hills which are a few meters in height. Some seconds after impact, the shadow of Huygens' parachute drifts across the scene. The heat from the surface science lamp and the probe's skin vaporizes methane from Titan's surface, which is about 180 centigrade degrees below freezing. Now Near the probe, the ground is littered with water ice rocks and smaller pebbles, which could be made of water ice 
or hydrocarbons or some combination thereof. Although we now know more than ever about this mysterious world, many questions remain unanswered. Where is the vast reservoir of liquid methane necessary to replenish the atmosphere? Where and how often does it rain on Titan? How does the methane get recirculated into the atmosphere? What materials make up the surface? What processes create and shape the hills, dunes, and valleys? Okay, thank you very much. Well, to be continuing, not the, the talk, but tomorrow there will be the last. Is it sound? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. So tomorrow will be the last talk of this series, and will be about uh, the Rosetta mission. It's another amazing mission in which we have participated. I hope to see you, all of you, tomorrow here. So Over thank here. you very much for your for your attention. If you want to make any question, please. Uh, so, uh, Cassini on the way there goes by Venus twice, Earth and Jupiter, all for purposes of speeding the thing up. So then it gets to some maximum speed, which I don't know what that is. But what do you have to do to get it slowed down enough to be captured by Jupiter, uh, I mean uh, Saturn's gravity, and what percentage of the weight of the, of the whole thing is fuel to slow it down? I don't know the exactly the, name, the number, but a very high, the, the total weight of the, of, of the, of the probe, of the, of the spacecraft, was a lot of fuel to, to be able to, not only to, for, to insert, but also to make all the navigation around Saturn, because you have to change, uh, one, because of Enceladus, uh, when they discovered that Enceladus was uh, uh, flowing away, they, they change some of their, so you need a lot of fuel. And then when it, it was decided to finish with the mission when this fuel, fuel that is used for navigation purposes, because I tell you that the, the, the energy necessary to, to, keep, uh, to, to keep the mission, the electricity and the heating was provided by a, a small uh, power, uh, nuclear power that was in the in the mission it was 32 kilogram of plutonium that was providing heat and electricity for all the instruments on the spacecraft not on the lander the lander was with batteries with electrical battery normal battery but in the 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 the, the power to 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 feed the, the instrument on board the, the cassini were with the with the nuclear power. But uh, for the, the navigation purposes, there was, I don't know, but more than 1,000 kilogram of, of fuel probably was needed. But you know, this is a detail that I know, I don't have the number. I will try to, to give you an answer tomorrow. <laughs> this is in the plan, it's in the plan tomorrow, Rosetta mission. No, I cannot believe it, that this is not in the program. Maru, do you have my telephone? Yes, it's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. There is a talk on the, on the Rosetta mission. Is it true that it's not in the program? Can you check? <laughs> 